So there's a story about Gauss who said that when he was nine years old and he was sitting in a classroom, his teacher asked him to add up all of the numbers from one to 100. And this was kind of a punishment assignment, which by the way, I never believe math should ever be a punishment. But then he finished the work in two minutes and his teacher didn't believe that he was correct. So what he noticed was that if you take the first in the last number and add them, it's 101. So 2 plus 99, also 101. And kept repeating that process, 3 plus 98, also 101. All of those will always match up to be 101. So, what did he do? And the formula is, you take the fact that you have n numbers, in this case 100, divide it by 2, and then add the first term and add the last term, and you will get that sum. And this is true for actually any arithmetic sequence, which is kind of cool. So the sum from 1 to 100 becomes 50. And I get the 50 because, again, that is just n over 2, which is 50. And then that's 1 plus 101, or 50 times 101. So that sum is 5,050. Now, this is really nice, but it also works for any arithmetic sequence. So if you look in the notes, I go through and do a proof for how they did this. Um, I'll probably find another video that does the proof and post it, but for now, we're just gonna go ahead and move on for the general form of the summation and talk about the, what that general form of the summation does. Now, what is a k? So let's talk about what all of these things are. a sub k, all that is is the explicit formula for any arithmetic sequence. And you know everything else. A1 is the first term. An is the last term, starting from 1, going all the way up to n. Now, there's also another formula that we can go ahead and use, very similar, and that's if you don't know what the explicit rule is. And if that's the case, then you just go from k is equal to 1 to n, again, of a k, which gen then is n over 2, to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times that common uh, difference. So let's go ahead and put it all together and see what we get. All right, so in order to go ahead and write the summation of 2 plus 5 plus 8, 8 plus 11 plus plus, and we don't know how many terms in it are here, and we're going to do that in a second, plus 29 in sigma notation, and then find the sum. So the first thing we need to do with that is find the explicit rule. So the explicit rule is a sub n is equal to a1 plus n minus 1 times the common difference. So we can go through and find the common difference. The common difference, I just look at between 5 and 2, so that gives, I subtract that. My common difference is 3. So I go ahead and that gives me a sub n is equal to a sub 1 is the first term. Remember, the first term in the sequence is a1. That is just 2. So that gives me 2 
plus I distribute the fact that now I know that d is equal to 3 and then it gives me 3n minus 3 or the fact that a sub n is equal to 3n minus 1. So that's my um, explicit rule. Now, for summation notation, what do we need? The summation notation goes from k is equal to 1 of my explicit rule. So I just go ahead and put that in there. So that becomes 3 1. But we don't know is this. We don't know what n is equal to. So now we have to go back and find n before we can find our answer. So how do we do that? We do that by knowing that my last term, a sub n, what does that equal? Well, a sub n is just equal to 29, right? So I'm going to use the fact that I know that a sub n is equal to 29. And I'm using the exact same formula that I had up here before. I'm still using the a1 plus n minus 1 times my common difference. And this time I'm going to go through and solve for n. So I know that I have 29 is equal to a1. a1 is still 2. From up here, everything stays the same. So I can actually even just plug it into this formula right here, right? So I can say 29 is equal to 3n minus 1, because everything else stayed the same. Now I'm just solving for n. And I need to use the last term, because the last term will tell me that n is the last term. So now that I add 1 to both sides, and I get 30 is equal to 3n, or that I have 10 terms in this summation. So now this is my summation formula. The next step with this is find the sum of that sequence. So using the formula again, the sum of any arithmetic sequence is all of this is all equal to and let me go ahead and raise this box. n over 2 times a1 plus a n, or 10 over 2 times 2 plus 29, which gives us 5 times 31, or 150. So I'm asked to do the same thing. So this time I'm going to list the steps of what you want to go ahead and do. So step one, make sure you write the explicit rule. Step two, go ahead and find n. Step three, write in form. And then four, find the sum. So if you want to go ahead and push pause and try that now. Um, but the explicit form, again, explicit form for that rule is just a sub n is equal to a1 plus n minus 1 times d. So a sub n is equal to my first term. My first term in the sequence is negative 3 plus n minus 1 times a common difference. And be careful with this particular common difference. Um, the sequence is getting larger, so it's going to be positive. So it is just going to be uh, 1 minus negative 3, which is equal to 4. And you can test that out between the next two numbers. 5 minus 1 also equal to 4. So my common difference here is 4. 
So therefore, a sub n is equal to negative 3 plus 4n minus 4, or equal to 4n minus 7. Now we're going to do the same thing we did last time. The last term in the sequence that we have here is this piece here. A n is 133. So I'm going to work backwards and solve for n. So I know the last term that I have is 133. Set that equal to 4n minus 7. So I can find n. I do that by adding 7 to both sides which gives me 140 is equal to 4n, and that n is equal to 35. So I'm going to go ahead and put all this together, just make this a little bit smaller, so I can fit the sigma notation inside here. I want to find the sum as k goes from 1 to n of for, and actually, to be honest with you, this really needs to be a k inside here. 4k minus 7. And that reason that needs to be a k, sorry about that. Um, is this k down here is my count. So as I'm plugging those in the first time, I set k is equal to 1. That would be my 4 minus 7, which gives me my negative 3. So I'm going to actually going to have to go and update the notes for that. But now we, we need to find the sum. The formula for that, again, is just n over 2 times a1 plus a n, which in this case is just 35 over 2 times negative 3 plus 133, which gives us 2,275.